for them here. <laughs> Good. You know, it's it's usually hard to uh, put a Zoom together where there are a lot of people. That's why most of my interviews are one or two or three, given given the uh, the notice and all of that stuff. Cool. <sighs> Hey, hi, are you done playing with yourself? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, haven't even started, bro. <laughs> <laughs> haven't even started. Yeah, that was on. just like, that was just like, uh, you know, like, a hey, little, so, like, you know. So are we going to be answering, like, are people going to be asking, answering, uh, asking if questions? They ask some questions. What? Well, let's, let's hope not. They don't put me on the spot. Don't put me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, you need to have. Okay. Are we live yet? Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> you need parental advisory, like warning across this screen right here. <laughs> True that, bro. Hold on here. All Plus right. one, let me see your hair, man. It looks good. I'll tag some of you. Oh, my hair? Yeah. It's uh, getting oh, there. Dude, you cut it off. Oh, I I keep on cutting it off and grows back when like about three months, four months. So, yeah. oh, hey, that's cool. <laughs> Give some to Rodney. <laughs> okay, so we're here. Uh, ladies and months, gentlemen, months, so. this is the Rob Podcast. <laughs> it's very unusual for me to put all of this. To put all of this mofos on screen because they're usually not okay. not all here at the same time. Somebody mute that damn thing. Yeah, who's that? <laughs> That's a good question. Gotta mute this shit. Mute your Facebook, everyone. I'm not even in Facebook. Okay, there it is. No. <laughs> All right, now we're good. Okay, everyone ready? <laughs> that was you, Rodney, wasn't it? <laughs> it was me. Yeah. It's always me, man. What the fuck? <laughs> awesome. All right, oh, ladies and gentlemen, man. these are my oh, good boy. friends. Uh, Guapo is missing and Orlando is missing here, but uh, all of these friends at any given moment at any time in my salsa dan uh, or bachata years has helped me a lot uh, for being supportive or even working with me uh, at many many times uh, at my upper left this is my left that's dj smooth right there he looks like a dj a real dj right there but because really, <laughs> he's starting his podcast soon below me is dj chino jairo Aguilar oh. right there what's up <laughs> Besides Jairo Aguilar is Javier Bardem. If you've never seen him, he's in many, many movies. Because <laughs> he looks like Javier Bardem. That's Jose right there. And then below below us, the very be uh, bottom would be Corey Rayner. You know him and, and, and some uh, funny videos that he does. And of course, <laughs> he is one of the promoter of, of uh, a great social dancing uh, back in the day. And I think he's... Is planning to do that soon. So, how's everyone doing, guys? Doing good. Doing good. I think life is good. What about you guys? Uh, well, I'm gonna go one by one with you guys. Uh, Jimmy, how's life? Are you getting married yet? <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon, soon. I gotta join <laughs> join the club. But for right now, uh, things are really good. Ever since the pandemic happened, my life has been really good. I mean, it's you know, I got I moved, of course. So I moved to uh, Burnley okay. Game, San Mateo yeah. County. Yeah, uh, I work for the for the state, so I'm really happy. Um, work for the government, so uh, gives me plenty of time. You know how government jobs are. Yeah, you know, sh you know. I'm uh, glad, you're <laughs> glad you're back in the in the uh, South Bayish uh, location because that's really your turf, dude. Yeah, I mean everyone's down here. I mean up in Sonoma County, as much as it was great and fun and uh, met some great people, I just didn't make any friends up there. Everyone that are is my friends, like you guys. You guys We're are down gone. in San Francisco, South Bay, yeah. but yeah, made no friends up there, which is fine. You know, I, I was meant to come back down here anyway. Uh, since then, uh, you guys know, of course, I'm in a 
happy relationship now after many many years of finally you know what's his work- name waldo or something waldo yes <laughs> <laughs> it's waldo i i did uh change uh sexes you know i um you know change uh, the, t- the team the team i play for actually i should say uh, hey, but- let's go uh, Jairo, how you doing bro i'm doing good bro you know just maintaining you know trying to trying to stay positive all through the pandemic bro so yeah but you, you but- was you were you were full time there. You were full time in our industry until the pandemic is gone. Now you have your your work, is, you're for, you're working for a company that's not dance related, right? That is correct. You know, before obviously, you know, my work before was uh, accounting, bookkeeping. Um, I was I did uh, from that I went on to just do DJs and promoting and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once the pandemic hit, man, everything everything went like you know down the drain. So I was forced. I had to uh, go back and get a full time job after eight years, bro. I yeah. mean, it's it's cool, but it's honestly it's kind of hard to get used to it, you know, like taking orders from a boss and <laughs> having to. Sh- Dude, having to show up every day at 7.30 or 8 in the morning, you know? <laughs> my my fiance is here bothering me. Anyway. <laughs> hey, yeah, well, I got a question, though. I mean, if once this yes. whole pandemic is over with and we're back to DJing, you're going to leave this job? You know what? So far, it's it's the job, it's okay. You know, I guess we will see how things, how things turn out with the pandemic. Um, obviously, if I see that things are pick up the same way that they were before then yes most definitely i will focus on on my on my on my own business stuff again of djing you know so awesome. we'll see i i haven't made a decision on that yet but for now a hey, uh it's a paycheck we all gotta make some money and we all gotta pay our bills so true that i gotta i gotta do it all right uh <laughs> let's say hi to Corey. Corey, uh how you doing man what what's what's new bro because i know you're single and ready to mingle <laughs> I'm single and ready to stay six feet away from all people. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, maybe my experience is, is pretty unique. Like, unlike Jimmy, you know, once the pandemic hit, the, the, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't all sunshine and butterflies. Um, you know, uh, it's 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 been a pretty. It's been a pretty rough year, <laughs> but uh, I think I don't think that's an unusual story. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, I don't know. I feel like uh, things are just beginning to get better. The sun is coming out, literally. Yeah. Um, I got I got COVID uh, back in in July, and uh, um, it was pretty intense. Uh, it was really intense. Had to go to the hospital for a little bit, and and um, what's crazy is that my energy didn't return until like a couple months ago. <laughs> And now I feel like I finally got my energy back and I'm like able to, uh, you know, walk to the living room and like walk over to the, no, I'm just kidding. Like I'm finally getting some energy back. I went to a park the other day and shot around. So, so I don't know. I feel like everything's, uh, getting good again and, um, and things are on the up and up. Good. DJ Guapo just came in, but we'll say hi to him later. Uh, we'll get to Jose. Oh, by the way, uh, just for the audience. Just in case you're wondering where Corey is, he's in the Middle East right now. Look at the back. <laughs> that is not Oakland, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is not Oakland at all. Jose, a.k.a. Javier Bardem. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Uh, same as everybody else. Uh, we all got hit pretty hard, especially on the restaurant industry with the pandemic. I've uh, been one of those lucky enough that uh continue working pretty much throughout the whole time. I've only had two weeks off. And you got uh, vaccinated uh, already, from what I hear, right? I already got my first vaccination. I'm waiting for my second one, which will be uh, in a couple of weeks. So, what's the what's the restaurant industry like? What's the future, given that it's only thirty percent capacity? Uh, I, they pro- we probably will, will hopefully within a month will be about about fifty percent capacity. If people are starting to get the vaccinations. Uh, you're still going to have quite a few different limitations. Uh, the, some of the craziest things is like even you had to keep on uh, monitoring restrooms and everything else too. Wow. For the restrooms, you don't you only have enough room for one person at a time. And, so you had to keep on making all these changes. And Jose, dude, when are you ever going to get married, bro? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? I'm married. He's married already. What? <laughs> are you? You what kind of friend are you that you don't know that, bro? <laughs> we can have a wait, bachelor's uh, party where we could like devour you or something. You mean you mean Corey didn't tell you we got married? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody say to Jason. Jason, what's up, bro? Hey, Jason. What's up, Susio? Hey, well, 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 well. I can't see his face. What, what, what is cracking, like right there. I'm, I'm a little late, as, as always. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, I'm still on bachata time. And, <laughs> so I apologize. I'm a little late. What, what's new, bro? How's married life? Uh, it's going. Um, you know, <laughs> nothing much has changed. Just working extremely long hours and... You know, like Jose said, I'm I'm kind of one of the fortunate, so I don't want to. I love your portrait. <laughs> Thank you. I see the portrait right there. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so Jason, though. That is so Jason. Um, Jace, um, what the hell? Do you miss DJing at all? You know, I miss the interaction. I miss talking to people and... and um, you know, just hanging out and getting to see everyone. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, I've been a little out of the loop for a little while. So, you know, maybe don't miss the DJ aspect itself as much as I do seeing all of you guys and, you know, hanging out. But you're a little disappointed before you, before the pandemic, as far as DJing is concerned with the crowd, right? I don't know if disappointed. Uh, can you expand on what? what that... <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a welcome, welcome to Rodney's podcast. <laughs> you're, you're... Uh, meaning, meaning, because the audience, you know, I think that I speak for Jimmy, Jairo, uh, uh, and you when it comes to DJing, because I have <laughs> experience with that when when audience come up to you and they demand bachata or they demand sensual songs and they don't know what the fuck they're asking. You know, he, I like it. He's, he's, ask. he's like laying it. out landmines in front of you guys. He's laying out landmines because <laughs> I don't know what's going on when he asks. <laughs> Jimmy, you look super professional, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like the Joe Rogan podcast. I, I'm just hey, getting man. ready for my uh, my YouTube my YouTube channel stuff. He, he looks like <laughs> the real real DJ out of all of us. That's what he looks like right now. Man. Wait a minute! I just saw Orlando liked our video. Orlando, you're supposed to get in here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's usually late. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. Jeez. <laughs> I see your wife just liked the video. I think you should show yourself. But okay, question here, guys. Will we ever get back to the normalcy of our industry again? You go first, Jason. Well, I think that depends on what you mean by normalcy. I think. You know, if you're speaking specifically about how things are going to look, you know, once in six months or 12 months from now, I think there will be some some form of normalcy, but not maybe not what it used to be. Let's hope it does. But I think overall, things are looking very positive. You know, the vaccine seems to be, you know, the pipeline seems to be growing. So Corey got his shot. No, or Jose <laughs> got his shot. So, you know, the important people are getting their shots. I don't have, I don't have my shot yet. So I probably, you know, it's, there's still some time before I can feel confident that things are going to be back to normal, but I yeah. let's hope so. And let's hope it happens soon. Cause I, you know, I know, you know, Jose's talking about the restaurant industry, but you know, the, the, everybody that's involved in musicians, DJs, you know, just a lot, a lot of people that we all know that are, you know, have been greatly affected by this. So let's hope things get back to some kind of normalcy soon. Corey, uh, since he mentioned your name, what do you think of the normalcy of the industry? When is that gonna happen? And when it does happen, Corey, are you going back out of retirement and do promotions? Come back. Come back. Well, I, I have I mean, I have no crystal ball. I have really no idea. But I would love to do events, but not a day or even a month or maybe even a year before it's like completely safe. And that's the crazy thing. It's like you know, in promoting, you know, you're only as successful like as you are, sort of like the first one to do something or like the most aggressive like promoter and when it comes to like getting people back touching hands like 
you know, touching hundreds of hands in a night, like that just seems like you want to be the last person in this case to do that um, and see what happens. I mean, I really don't know. I'm not a scientist. I, I, have not, I have no idea of how this works. I know that I got it. I was pretty damn careful too. Like um, I was really careful. I saw a handful of, of people who were all pretty safe themselves and, uh, and I still got it. And it was awful. It was like way worse than, than anything I've ever gotten before. And so, but anyways, the point is I, I want to get back as the day it's safe. And I just hope that, that, uh, that comes soon. Corey, how did you get it? Do you think? I say it again. How did you get it? Do you think? You got it from sex. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, Wait, I, I really, Tijuana all over again. No, <laughs> I really was really, mingling, mingling. <laughs> It was the exchange of fluids. That's that. Don't you know? That's how you spread it. It's like you're talking fluids. about AIDS, Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. But anyway, I, I, uh, I, let's I, ask Jimmy. Jimmy, same question. Normalcy. Are we ever gonna be like that again, or are we gonna be forever dancing with masks and all of that shit? I think it's gonna get back, but I mean, it's gonna get back faster when these people. When I say people, there's a lot of people who are just afraid of this virus, and understandably so. I understand the there's a fear to it but at some point you just gotta you gotta take the jump take the leap and just accept that that it's out there yes we are going to get vaccinated we are i mean the idea is or the goal i should say we're all going to be vaccinated by the end of may i think it's going to happen i think that it's going to take a couple of uh i think another year i would say by the end of december november october around that time i think we should be okay when it comes to masks i think we're gonna be wearing masks for probably another year but i think at least with the clubs, I think we'll be open. I think we'll be open probably by the end of this year. That's my opinion. Uh, Chino, I know that you have a regular job now, but when we return to normalcy, we're talking about you DJing, and then we're all already talking about you also doing sound system for festivals and some other clubs right there. Do you think you'd make more money when you go back to the industry than now? And you know what? I don't know, man, because going back to like, you know, how what Corey and that professionals move, uh, you know, and Wapo said, dude, I don't know that how soon we're really going to get back into this. You know, and I'm guessing it'll be maybe another year. You know, I know that Smooth is saying sometime October or November, but I mean, I'm not I, I'm not really sure. Would I be able to make more money? I mean, honestly. I was making really good money not to get a full-time job in the last eight years, which was yeah. great, you know, yeah. but I'm not planning to quit anytime soon. Even, yeah. even if things get back to normal, um, I have to see how everything is going to be first before I decide, you know what? Okay. I, I, I'm going to go back to uh, full-time a hundred percent with the DJ stuff, you know? So, to answer your question, if I'm gonna make more money or not, I don't know. I don't really know how things are gonna get um, in the near future. You know, um, as a matter of fact, honestly, when things get back to normal, it's either gonna be, I think, one of the two cases, which is a people are already right now getting used to like staying home and not going out and actually enjoying their time off. You know, <laughs> enjoying the time. You know, or it's going either going to be, you know what, people are fed up and they're just going to all go and they don't care, you know, and the place is going to be packed. So well, it's going to it's going to be one of the two things. So I can't really say, am I going to make more money? I don't know, you know, but you know, hopefully, hopefully everything gets back to normal. Hopefully everything is going to be OK, you know, and, and I go back and just do uh, and doing what I love, which is the DJ and the promoting and all that stuff. Oh, you know, I got a question if uh, uh, Ronnie, you don't mind me asking Hyro. Uh, Hyro, what do you think about all these underground uh, salsa, uh, underground dancing events that's going on? I hear here and there, but what do you think about those? You know what, honestly, people that are doing that, I honestly don't see what it is that they're, what are they trying to accomplish with that? Because in order for, in order for us to get back to normal, we all got to do our part. You know, we all have to do our part. I see some videos of, pe of people posting dance events and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Do you not have families? You know, do you not have a, a grandma or do you don't care about anybody else? You know, trust me, as much as I miss 
DJing as much as I miss it, trust me, I miss that. Like, I don't know if I miss it more than any of you guys, but I really do. You know, every single day I'm looking at videos where I'm, where I was like DJing and like, oh my God, I wish I go back to this, you know, but at the, but at the same time, I'm thinking about my parents. I'm thinking about the people outside, you know, wow, what if I get it? Uh, what if I get it? Maybe I'm going to be okay because, you know, I mean, I'm not super old or whatever. I, mean, I think I'm healthy enough. Um, but what about someone else that has asthma or something? You know, I don't want to take that in my, in my conscience. So do I respect the, those people that are doing events like that? Hell no. And, I, and, and if, I, if I knew somebody that I know that was doing that, I will tell them in their face because people know how I am. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be the, the type of person that's going to go and talk behind your back. I'm going to confront you and I'm going to tell you about it. Yo, what the hell are you doing, bro? You know? So, Jose, what do you think of all of this? Uh, well, uh, one of the things that I keep on hearing people talking about will be when we go back to normal. Um, I think that the normal that we used to know is going to have to evolve. Uh, the places that are actually going to become successful will be the ones that are trying to do different things in order to make sure that every single person that comes in there is not only having a good time, uh, but they're also staying safe. Uh, even once, even a year from now, uh, a lot of the things that we are learning right now, uh, those are going to be part of our daily life. Uh, we basically, like with any other catastrophe that has ever happened, uh, the ones that see it and they actually make some changes, they tend to be the ones that will, uh, that will survive the, the longest on any kind of business. Uh, when it comes to like the underground, uh, I think we all seen it. Uh, it it's, not just, um, it's not just clubs, there's bars, there's restaurants. Uh, a lot of people, instead of uh, trying to figure out a better way of doing things, they try to do things under the table and that doesn't really help anybody. If anything, uh, that starts, uh, that will make a little bit more conflict for all of those that are trying to do things the right way. Did it ever cross your mind to open your own restaurant, was it? <sighs> I've been asked this uh, quite a few times by a lot of different people. Uh, I don't know that I want to open my own. Uh, not because I don't like doing this, uh, uh, but it's just, I like the part of being able to teach other people and spend time with them, uh, train them, uh, give them the knowledge. But if I had to also be the ownership, uh, whenever you're the owner, you, uh, it becomes a lot of times more when it, kind of, it has to do with the numbers. You have different stresses that might not allow me to do what I like to do, which is socialize with everybody. So. Okay, well, by the way, Felipe, Felipe DJ L de la Clave said hi to all of you guys. He's watching. Who is he? Felipe, Felipe Martinez, uh, DJ L de la Clave. Did he post uh, I don't know who this person is. I think Gabriel hates <laughs> him right kidding. now, but just you know. Kidding. Just, just kidding, Felipe. Just, just teasing. Did they let him out already? Anyways, here's a question, guys. I'm going to go with Jason first. Did we, at one point or another, our exes, did we ever get go out with them? Huh? <laughs> what? What was the question? Did I ever go out with your exes, or did you ever go out with my exes, Jason? No, no one's going to oh, answer this. Wow! <laughs> we'll have to answer it. God damn it! <laughs> Not gonna happen. Uh, that's, uh, I'm going to stay clear on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of Chino. I didn't know this was a gotcha podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is Jose, I have to confess. Okay. Okay. Jose, I have to confess. There was one girl that I went out with, but uh, I'm not going to mention her name. But That's fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody else want to be out? Jimmy? <laughs> I, I, I only go out with people who Jose has dated. <laughs> uh, I wasn't born yet. So I, I don't know who your exes are. <laughs> I'm still young. I'm still 21 right now. <laughs> Uh, wow. <clears throat> so everyone is married here. Jimmy is married. Well, practically. Chino is practically married. Congratulations, Jason. Chino. It doesn't count. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It doesn't count. You can't give uh, Chino a free ticket. He has to actually go down the aisle. For He's engaged. Marriage. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. He could just call it off right now. He could say, fuck it. Fuck it. I need a girl. You know? Oh, she will call it off. Not him. Not him. <laughs> Trust me. She's lucky to have me. 
Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she's right there, bro. <laughs> you know what she said right now? She's like, yeah, right. <laughs> she just typed that, so yes. <laughs> um, so, the bachata industry, as you know, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's overpowering salsa or has has it overpowered salsa. Uh, Corey? I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> and, um, I mean, Are you like, being politically correct yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll say this. I'll say this. Like, uh, you know, Evan was doing the Saturdays at 5.50. Um, and he would, you know, it never really took off. But, like, every once in a while he would flip the rooms. And, like, it seemed like it did bigger, like, when the, the bachata was in the big room towards the end there. So I, I will say that. But I have no idea what that means in I'll Jeff. ask Jason because <laughs> yeah, anyways, very good. Jason is the very first bachata DJ, I mean, quote unquote, in the Bay Area. What do you think, Jason, of that question? Uh, I mean, at the moment, neither, because nobody parties are zero. Yeah, exactly. So it's an even score at the moment. I think, I, I, I think the bachata has made a, a lot of progress in the last 10 years or so since you started the festivals and, you know, started promoting bachata in the Bay Area and worldwide, Mr. Worldwide, you know, it's, it's come a long way. I think if you were to compare, you know, populations, you would have a bigger salsa population across the world than you do bachata. And there what, yeah. The momentum is in the bachata side and i think nowadays if you are doing an event or a party you need to have both you can't have either you know pick and size i think it's also kind of a a little bit counter to the to to the uh to the community because i think people can it's okay to like both it's okay you don't have to pick one or the other it actually let me throw this back at you guys like uh just a general <laughs> question it, it if things were like perfect today, like as of this afternoon, anybody can open, you can go to whatever party you want. What would be, if you had like the perfect night, what would be your choice for the first dance and the last dance? Oh. <laughs> it's also for me. It's Ooh. also for us. Oh, Rodney. Ah, bachata, there's no doubt. I'll, for I'll the first or the I last mean, or what, both? Let's ask Jose because <laughs> uh, what does say? Because he's unbiased when he comes to this. Uh, salsa or bachata? With Jason's question. Jason, question: How I'll probably start with start? salsa, hey, and then and then once you find the right partner, you will end up with bachata, of course. So, Corey, we, what we would you? Them. I know, I know, Corey, you're into the Brazilian too. So. <laughs> Well, you know, you got more than just salsa, you but you make the food or the music, <laughs> or or, or yeah. the women. Uh, like I said, food or the music. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think I would echo Jose. I think I would start with a salsa. If I have two songs, I, the first song would be a salsa, the second song bachata, and the night. Yeah. I'm the only one who's gonna go for bachata, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a reason behind it. I mean, uh. But chat may be a little bit more approachable for people that haven't danced. But if they see you dance salsa and they're like, I can do that, I'm like, here, let me show you. Then eventually uh, you get them into the mood and you start doing a little bit of bachata. So basically what, basically what you just said is bachata is a lot easier to dance to than salsa, correct? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, for what about, for somebody uh, what... that's starting to dance, yes. What about Kizoma? We never talk about Kizoma. What, don't we Forget want to it. Asleep? The pandemic is not over yet. Forget Kizoma, man. <laughs> but I, it's a great way to fall asleep. That's all I'm thinking. You know, it's a good like nighttime uh, nightcap or something. But then again, when Jason, I mean, um, Rodney, when he was talking about Pachata, I mean, we've all seen him dance with a ball too. Agree. I agree. It's a good, it's a great question, uh, Jason, <laughs> because that would, that would gauge uh, the customer's interest and what they, where they're gonna go, you know. Uh, if you know, as promoters, which one are we gonna organize first? Is it gonna be an emphasis on salsa or is it gonna be an emphasis on machata? Or you want it mixed? And you know, you know, I don't like it mixed that much, as you know. But I mean, if I have a way, because a lot of people now has gotten spoiled 
and became a brat of a specific dance and they want to stay in that one room only there are really like really just 100 like that but if i have a way i would like to do ballroom type where you play bachata you play merengue you play, cha -cha -cha, you play salsa in one room and and in, if some people do not know how to dance one tough luck you need to learn it that's just the way it is i mean you know rodney question for you so do you think we'll ever go back to mixed rooms no no uh i want to do it uh i know that i i just i just teased hawaii if if the hotel ever say yes on october on the halloween that's gonna be one room bro and it's gonna be mixed you know so i, I think that they both really have their 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 pros and cons you know i mean it's really it's really cool kind of you know if you're you you make a connection in the bachata room and then you travel with them to the salsa you know it's like you've just been on like two three dates with the same person in, in a single night it's oh you're cool. speaking from experience huh corey <laughs> no it's cool like that but also i i'd say some of my favorite memories of dancing are like uh are you know in single rooms like a lot of times with with jason djing you know where he you you'd go from like a cumbia to a, a salsa to a bachata in like a span of 15 minutes and like it's cool when everyone has to be in the same room and they have to interact and they have to watch people and they have to sit out on dances they don't know how to do and be like, damn it, I have to learn this dance now, you know? And it's like, yeah. it, it's a really cool, cool vibe. So, that, you know, there's, there's benefits to both. <laughs> there's this pros and cons for sure. I mean, yep. but if festival wise dog guys uh, and location wise, if everything is good, what is your wish? Where would you like to go? <laughs> You mean festival wise? Oh, city. Yeah. Festival wise, yeah. Uh, Francisco, of to... course. I think Francisco, <laughs> man. Jason is laughing because he knows why I'm asking that question. <laughs> he wants to go to Hawaii, right? I want to go. <laughs> it's we all want to go to Hawaii. It's almost what? like a vacation from the fucking pandemic, dude. You know, <laughs> you know, that's just me. But. Uh, Who is that? What else do you guys want to talk about? Any good movies lately? Wonder Woman was a disappointment. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about like the whole movie industry. Like uh, I just heard on news recently that uh, uh, movie studios, they're changing the way they uh, approach this. Because, you know, usually they release a movie. It takes them a year before it releases on DVD or Blu-ray. So now they're trying to shorten that time. And also, I think right now, HBO Max is pretty much dominating the, the space right now in terms of releasing movies. What do you guys think? Well, um, for the viewers, why we talk movies is because when the pandemic, uh, before pandemic, we used to hang out once a month and watch our watch a good movie, and we all hang out, go to Oakland at a IMAX, and we all hang out and watch a movie, and that's why we talk movies right now. But uh, uh, Jimmy has asked a good question. For one thing, the reason they're doing that now because Wonder Woman 1984 broke the record for the most viewed in HBO. I think it's a great idea, although just like books and computers, which are now for audio, right? I still enjoy the smell of books and reading it before sleeping rather than watching it in computer. It's the same way in movie. I'd love to go to a big screen. I'd love that, that, that vibe. I love to get a popcorn than just watching in a 60 inches screen in a HBO Max, you know? That's, that's why when I watch movies at my house, I just, I pour soda on the floor and just make my feet all sticky. I, I put I put gum under my couch cushions just to get the get the feeling. Wait, what kind of movie are you talking about? <laughs> hey, bro, do you put bubble gum under your chair too? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I I just put popcorn butter all over my shirt. <laughs> Sounds kind of kinky. What do you think, Jason? You know, I think it, it's a great question, and, and and you know, I think it just brings it, it puts it into perspective with respects to bachata festivals and events. You have to adapt. You know, the the movie industry has had to adapt. If you were to, if they were just sitting around waiting for movie theaters to open up 100, percent we'd be watching reruns of everything. So, 
you know, I think it's it's the same thing has to happen, and and I'm seeing it actually in, in, in on on Facebook. A lot of instructors are now teaching online, which I think is a great idea. You know, if you if you're thinking about doing the same event in the same you know the same fashion, I think you're going to be waiting a long time. The people that are having that are, are able to adapt, I think, are going to be you know, at the, in the end, probably more successful. I, I like the idea of movies, you know, people having the choice. I do like the aspect of going to the movies, but like you said, you know, books have moved to computers. Now you can read on, on, a, on an iPad or whatever, a laptop, you can read the entire book. And, you know, the new, uh, the younger generation, it's now more used to that. They'll, they'll probably prefer doing that than having to drive to the movie theater, look for parking, spend 20 bucks on, you know, popcorn, I'd rather save me, save the money and stay at home. So, you know, and some people now have huge TVs anyway. So I think, um, I think it's a good idea to look at what all the options are. And I think, you know, Disney, for example, is, I, I can't, I, I'm not going to cite the numbers, but I heard Disney Plus or Disney X, whatever the, the name is, they, they've done tremendously well. Very. Yeah. where their parks are basically closed. So, you know, they've had to adapt and they've had well, to- well, well, uh, On that trend of thought though, Jason and Jimmy, on that trend of thought, do you think in festivals that you can offer the workshop in person, like at the hotel and all of that stuff, but you can also offer it virtually? Would that defeat the purpose of profits and of course losses? I'll let Jason go. <laughs> well, I think, you know, I just saw something online like a couple of days ago where an event happened online. But that's I, only virtual. I'm not going to speak. What? But that's only virtual, though. Exactly. What My, I'm saying is, the can question, they go for both? Yeah. Well, so can it happen? The question was, can it happen and how does it affect profit and loss? Well, can it happen? The answer is yes, because people are doing it. They've already done it. And does it affect profit and loss? Well, it depends, you know, you don't have the overhead of having to rent an entire hotel and you don't have the pressure of having to fill up a block of rooms. So that's off your shoulders. Now, can you get the, you know, can you get the same thing as Disney? Can you get people to sign up and pay to view it online, to learn online? I think eventually you still need for dancing, the, the complexity of dancing is it's different than movies. You can watch a movie and, and get the experience of the movie whether it's in a big screen or, or a small screen, you know, on your laptop, but for dancing, you need to have that connection with the other person. So it's Not like I'd rather watch a, sh uh, a, a, a live concert than hear it on a CD any day. I so, mean, what do you think? Hmm? I wrote, what do you think? Oh, you said me. Sorry. Mm. You were sleeping there, bro? Gotta, listen. No, no, no. Listen. All I got to say is I can't wait for Mortal Kombat to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's for real. <laughs> That's what I got to say. Just, just, just last night, I went to the the movie theater right by Jason's house, like uh, the, the West Wind Solano uh, in Concord. And uh, I could barely see the screen because it was, you know, people had their their headlights on. It was a drive-in movie. I could barely hear the movie on my, um, and it was a horrible movie because I couldn't pick, you know, from a million different things and what I wanted to watch. But I still enjoyed it more than watching a movie at home just because I was near some other people who were watching the same thing, and like it, it, you know, it was a nice experience. So I think, you know, I think there's both. I think there's people who want both, but like just for like half the festival the joy of, of festivals just being crammed around a bunch of strangers, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's the part of the allure, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, what about you, Jose? Jose, being in the restaurant business and not really that much in the salsa industry anymore, if you were to be passionate again and go back there, would you do virtual or you would go into the hotel and do that festival stuff? I think one of the things that will probably make sense for a lot of different people right now, uh, you might want to do like a hybrid of both. Uh, I mean, let's say you want to do it on Reno. You book the hotel, you talk to a few different restaurants. Yeah. So they can only sell certain tickets. 
you can stream the workshop while you're having an area in the hotel that could simultaneously be uh, shown on a lot of different restaurants around the area. So you can get groups within their own bubble that they feel comfortable. You'll almost be going with your friends to go dancing, uh, but you'll also still be getting the live instructor at the same time. I, I think something like that will probably be appealing to a lot of people right now. That's what I was thinking when Jason was asking us, like, what about both virtual and in person? Uh, people can have their choices, but I don't know if that would affect profits. Uh, well, if you actually pair up with some restaurants that will pre-sell certain tickets, uh, they can into, they can also do a dinner. You will bring some people to come to the you. restaurant. So at this point, you're actually promoting almost like the whole town, where you are. Uh, each restaurant can also just buy into some of that same partnership. Uh, and then there will be some profit to be made by everybody. By the way, let's say hi to everyone. Uh, Kathy is viewing Ava Apple, uh, Jairo's brother, Luis Aguilar, the legend in the Bay Area. <laughs> Blue Dog. Saludos. The creator of uh, uh, Flor de Caña. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, just uh, if you have any questions, just type in there in the live version. And uh, Jason will be happy to answer all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets it because he was the one that was late. <laughs> <laughs> or Orlando is missing as usual, you know. <laughs> Are you sure? He gave him I don't think he even got one. He he was included in the in the in the chat, and and the link was there. Typical Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> but, we uh, we should be asking Kathy this question. She literally just did it. Oh yeah, the Bella. She just had her Bella weekender. That was a. She will type in there in the live if she is listening to us and whatnot. But not to sell. Do not hire Orlando. He may not show up to your event. <laughs> <laughs> you know the other thing talking about profits. You know you have the opportunity where it's a festival is only three days. If you put it online, you can make revenue in perpetuity because. You can you can sell just the lesson, right? Yeah. Or or just that one workshop, and, and it doesn't have to a, a festival. After that one hour, you're done. You can't make more money out of it. But yeah. so I, if you're looking at it from a profit standpoint, that could be another option for you. And like you said, less overhead. But right now, the virtual I mean, the virtual space I mean, the hybrid model. I mean, if this, if that's the only thing, if that's the only thing that's available, I don't think anyone, it's not, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing a, a good thing about it. I mean, I think people, when it comes to dancing, it's a physical aspect. It's something that people like to do in person and the hybrid model, I mean, for dancing, sure. It works if that's no, if there's no other option, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of it, man. I mean, there's a hybrid model when it comes to education, which is what they're trying to employ right now. Uh, they're letting, I think, 25% of kids go on, go on, starting to go on campus, at least with San Mateo County, starting next month. And there has been backlash already, unfortunately. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of confidential information that I've heard about. But basically, you, you have teachers who are airing that it's not going to work that message is going to the, the, to the student and that student is telling their mom and dad. And then the mom and dad is making a big scene and blowing things up and saying, hey, you know what? Why are you saying that uh, this is not gonna work for my kid? So I don't know. I mean, look, look, on that note, personally for me, if I was not a promoter, I'm just an attendee, I'm just a student, I would like to go to the Congresses personally because I wanna meet all kinds of people and I wanna dance with them. That's just me. I can't get anything from virtual from learning something that I cannot apply in person. Yeah, that's why I'm saying the virtual. I personally don't think the virtual, virtual models are going to work. But I mean, that's it's what is available now, right? I mean, if there's no other option, it's it's available now. That's what we got. That's what we got to do. But I would say that when things are open and people are vaccinated, I feel like there's going to be a shift towards virtual uh, classes to in person people will, will gear towards that instead and not spend money on the uh, virtual classes the advantage of the virtual like jason was saying is that post festival you could sell those record if you record it you could sell those as videos and all of that are you i don't know i don't i whatever it is but what do you think of this Corey? 
Well, I just I just taught a, a virtual class. I was I got well. I have no idea because because uh, supposedly <laughs> supposedly there was two hundred <laughs> students. Uh, uh, it got booked for me. You know, a company hired me to teach their their staff, and there's supposedly two hundred people on the in the class. But I couldn't see or hear them because it was oh my God. in webcast mode. So all I see is myself. I'm just talking to my phone, myself, you know, and I'm doing my class and I'm hoping people are enjoying it. And, uh, you know, it's just you also find out like when you're used to like the time it takes to go through a class and see people do it and correct them or make jokes and, and yeah. there's back and forth and questions. But when that's all gone, you're like, wow. So I just did five minutes and that's all I know how to teach. Uh, what else do you guys want to do? You know, like when you cut out all that dead time, it was just, it was crazy. It was like 15 minutes goes by. I was like, all right, we finished the class, I guess. Like, I don't know how, I don't even know if they're enjoying this, you know, but, uh, but I, I ended up getting some good feedback um, later, but it was just such a weird thing to be talking to a silent room, you know? So when it's hundred percent capacity in California, when it becomes California, what do you guys want to do first? Strip Doesn't club. have to be dance related. Strip club. <laughs> gotta, gotta support the strippers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're essential workers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I mean, it comes up. No from strip club, man. They just get your money. Come on. And apparently, for the right amount of money, they're willing to get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! See, what else is the alternative besides strip club, guys? <laughs> I think what I missed most is uh, they're actually eating out. I mean, going to restaurants and being the, the social aspect of uh, meeting with friends and chit chatting, and you know, I mean, you don't realize that when it comes to eating out, it's such a social aspect of our lives to connect with one another. And I mean, not just with dancing. Obviously, dancing. I think for for all of us, we can all agree that it's something we all want to do. But yeah. besides dancing, I, I I believe it's the food because I I mean for me, you guys know I'm always taking pictures of food. I'm always going out to eat. I mean that's why I always love to do, and I kind of I miss that aspect. How's your love life, Jimmy? Because I know you. <laughs> how's how's that going? Love life is awesome. Um, with a beautiful <laughs> uh, girlfriend who. Uh, is um, she's just great, man. I mean, I, I, as you guys know, I mean, I spent years and years working on myself. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that you guys knew that I came from an abusive family. So it's it's taken a lot of years to to re rewire myself so that way I don't project the same abuse that I had from my parents. So I, my girlfriend, Masha, you know, who's a Kizoma instructor, Kizoma promoter, uh, she's great, and she's supportive. I mean, I I think that I, I can agree. I can say that it's kind of like what Yaro feels with his girlfriend. You know, I, I don't know it's the same, but you know, it's like it's that same happiness of, you know, we we came from like really different tough lives or very you know very very colorful lives, I should say. And then finally meeting someone that actually brings the best out of us or actually accepts us for who we are, which gives us the space to grow and become the better man that we can be. Do you have an age gap? Is it is it uh, a big gap or not? Six years. She's uh, thirty six right now. She's thirty thirty seven next uh, next month. Um, you know, do you have a big gap with your uh, fiance? Me? Yeah, big gap as, as far as how old you are. Nine years. Nine it's not years. really big. Nine years. Is that the reason why you get in shape all the time or something? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been in shape, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 oh by the way jim i needed to ask you yeah from your past relationship what do you think is the difference now that you're happy what made it different uh being happy with myself it yeah i think that's the biggest important thing i think over the years i've learned that uh in order for you to be happy it's it depends on how happy you are and it kind of envelopes everything from there because now that I'm happy with myself, then I'm not going to tolerate unhealthy behavior in other relationships. That means that I'm not going to seek out or, or settle with just any relationship. So I, I believe that that's where it kind of goes from. It starts from kind of inside being happy with yourself and it just kind of expands out in your circle. And uh, if you met Masha, you usually have already, you know that she never gets mad. I don't, there's, we're, we're approaching our one year anniversary and she has never yelled at me. 
She's never snapped at me. I mean, I have, I'm a hothead. I know that much, but for her, she's never snapped at me, never yelled. And the only way I could have that kind of person in my life is because I'm able to give something back, which is what she wants, which is she wants a secure relationship. And I think that's what's missing with a lot of relationships. We don't provide a secure relationship for our partners, which results in a lot of behavior where we act out, like we cheat or uh, we, we yell and that sort of thing. Uh, Corey, with you, uh, that just come out of relationship, I think probably a year ago or so, what are your uh, goals nowadays when it comes to relationship? My goal is to never get in a relationship again as long as I, <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like down on, on the whole long, even the concept of a long term. Do you have, <laughs> do, do right you have PTSD? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I just think it's like, I just think it's, it's, it's like, um, it's so beautiful when it works, but it's such an improbability like i'm not i'm not saying it's anyone's fault just like relationships in general it's such yeah. a highly improbable thing it's like so many things need to line up for it to work like you know personalities cultural backgrounds communication styles like living in the same place liking the same thing you know so many things need to line up that uh for those of for those of who that does happen to like more power to them but it's like like it's like trying to build uh, a career path like your career path is to like win the lottery like that's your plan <laughs> you know it doesn't seem like a good plan like for the people who do win the lottery great but it doesn't seem like a good plan at least that's how i feel right now <laughs> uh, can i bring something up escape my question or something it just right. disappeared. <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> I... jose is breaking up hard to do and when you do break up is there an easy way to do it I don't think that there is a, a really easy way. Normally, when you get to the point, that's because things didn't really work out. But then again, since the beginning, you can almost tell whether something's going to work out or not. Uh, I, is like, it, is like, it better to be upfront about it or just play it out? Well, like what Jimmy was saying, I think one of the biggest problems that most of us, including me, are learning how to be, uh, how to make your own self happy. If you're able to be happy with, with your own person and you don't need anybody to make you happy, then you're ready to share your life with someone else. If you're looking for somebody that's trying to make you happy, then you're going in there for all of the wrong reasons. It's not, unless you're Corey and he's looking for somebody that's going to be spanking him and, you know, <laughs> all kinds of things. Uh, and he does not have a safe word, or so I heard. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think that they breaking up it's uh it's inevitable if if it, the relationship was never really there or if you stop being you just to be in a relationship or the other person stopping in who they are just to be in a relationship it's this is gonna fail so, but that brings up another thing where it's like why are people breaking out right there people have it's like i think a lot of times and i want to bounce off of that jose so that we can answer is yeah. don't you think that a lot of times that people when it comes to breaking up they just they don't have the real reason why they're breaking up or they just don't know what the real reason is. Don't you agree? Well, all relationships end in breakups or death. I mean, that's just a statistical fact. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what Jimmy was Damn, talking about. right there. <laughs> it's like uh, one of the things like, uh, that he just mentioned, I dated somebody that every time we will break up, but I didn't know. I never got closure or anything, but he got to the point where I was like, Okay, I'm never gonna get the answers that I'm that I'm looking for. Why are we breaking up? Or why is this happening? But that was the same thing. It's like me not being okay with just being me. So I'm looking for that answer somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, Jason, where were you, man? You avoided all of our questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Did I miss all that? I yeah, that was a good excuse, man. I, I got thirsty. All that chit chat got me thirsty. <laughs> Cheers. Is uh, the Golden Gate, all the Golden uh, Warriors, I mean, <laughs> are, we ever gonna get back, are we ever going to get back to that championship this year, guys? Not this year. <laughs> Not this year, for sure. Not this year. But... You mean LeBron is going to win again? Oof. 
It's either going to be either them or the uh, or Durant's team. What was that again? Uh, the Nets, right? Nets. I think, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think the Nets are going to win it, probably. One of them, too. Correct. Wait, 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 wait. Durant? Durant, well, Durant plays Clippers. for the Nets. Are you serious, really? I'm so out of the loop. Yeah, James Harden, <laughs> James Harden, Kyrie Irving went too, and they're and they're going to get more people real soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sad about that. Anyway, <laughs> now let's talk about something else. I, any topic, Jason? He's good at topics, so that we don't have <laughs> questions. Yeah, I'm just curious what what party event club do you guys miss the most? Ooh. Well, can I say something I mean, real quick? Before the pandemic or ever? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Corey wanted to say something. Everything's before, before the pandemic. Right? Everything's before the no. J Jason posted. I recently reposted uh, a video of you know at Impala, and Jason was posting like he he wrote a. Uh, it's too bad you don't know you're in like the glory days or the best times of your life when it's happening. And I feel like that's so true. Like so many, um, so many moments that have been spent with you guys. You know, at at Glass Cat at. And Impala like that are just like, man, I wish I knew how special that was. And I, and I think everyone thinks that time in their life is special when, whenever that time happens for them. But I I feel like it was pretty special. And uh, I just wish I had like really appreciated it at the time or something. I don't know. For me, when it comes to salsa, I'd say Cafe Kokomo when it comes to salsa. Oh, 100%. Um, and when it comes to Mambo, down low, okay? Uh, when it comes to bachata, glass cat on the upper upper side of of glass cat and impala. I think well, the, I think the most fun that I've ever had on one single night uh, was interestingly enough the first Avanissimo a la taza de café, where we got like about 130 people in there in the tiny spot. Man, all the great dancers and all beautiful people were there. Remember that, Jason? Yeah, I was just thinking about Havanissima. I was, I was going to say, like, if there was one party that I, that I would love to see come back would be something like that. Because I, you know, I didn't, I, I, I miss the Cuban salsa and the bachata for me personally. Together, yeah. Really work together. I really like La Tassa, just the ambiance and great, great people. Um, and actually today being Sunday, it would be Jelly's. You know, for those of you that go back that long, that, yeah. that was a great party too. Yeah. Hi, Rob. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what's your favorite, except the, your garage in the house. Will you play all of your, uh, uh, invite all of your friends and do some barbecue and dance, but. Bro, uh, well, besides that, you know, the one that I really do miss, obviously, is Cafe Kokomo. It's Friday's Taste Fridays. That's what I miss. Yeah. Big, big room in the front, the bachata room in the back. Oh, yeah. It was great. And then, like, the last 15 minutes of that, uh, you know, when we were DJing in the front, the last 15 to 20 minutes, oh, baby. Hip hop, dance music, you know, dance hall. Oh, man. Reggaeton. That was amazing. I'll never oh, yeah. play Kokomo because. To those viewers that doesn't know, there's a very small room at the back. <laughs> That's where my bachelor's party was. <laughs> I remember oh, yeah, that. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Wait, who, who attended? <laughs> Wasn't it your wife that attended, Ronnie? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you think? What's your favorite, dude? What do you miss, man? Oh, God. That's tough to say. You know, well, I was just thinking about it. I don't miss anything. I know it's kind of odd to say, but... <laughs> I don't miss dancing. I think I, my but you're the type, so though. I mean, you would go everywhere pretty much. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I went everywhere. There was no like one place I really loved or missed. But I would say that if I had anything, the golden years, I would say Impala. I think that was when I feel like Impala at that time was the Wild West. Right? I liked was, the vibe. Yeah. There was just no, there was no like rules. There was just like, <laughs> just, yeah, I think that was the best part. There's just no rules when it comes to bachata. I think now that because if bachata has evolved and the instruction has evolved, you know, there's like this and that, or how to do this and how to do that. But back then it's like, we didn't give a shit. 
back there yep. in terms of like how we dance. We just want to bump and grind, see what yeah. kind of ass we got when we got back home. You know, <laughs> that's what I think. It, there were, Jose, there were, Jose was mentioning, Jose was mentioning La Taza, but Jose, don't you remember La Luna de Azul? Oh, yeah. That was a fun place. In the corner. Union, uh, Union oh, Squares. man, that was such a good location, except the owner was a dick. <laughs> Towards the end or at the beginning? Or just the, the beginning and the end. We were just, you know, like, I, as, a, as a patron, as I recall, I, I liked it. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that because you guys hook up with some ladies there. Jeez. Hey, that was our great 30s. Remember, but that? I have that to was... give credit to Jason because post Salsa Gang, I didn't know what to do. And we just decided to be a promoter. You know, we were going to La Taza, we were going to La Luna uh, uh, at one point. Yeah, you know, there was salsa crazy involvement there, but yeah, I have to give credit to Jason. And then, you know, he, he was the first bachata DJ and he took a risk in that one doing the glass cut on the upper side of glass cut. But yeah, I, you know, I remember those days and I still remember Jason and I, I had my BMW at that time. We were parked at La Luna de Azul in front of La Luna de Azul. And I think Jason was staring at this guy because <laughs> he likes to stare. He likes guys? The guy came, rushed, and broke my window, man. And they were like, what? what? How many of them? Three? I don't remember the story. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I never told anyone because I'm embarrassed about it. But now I'm telling it now because I told Jason, don't do anything, Jason. <laughs> I didn't want to get into fights. <laughs> and they broke my window. You remember that, Jace? Where was Chino with the steel back? <laughs> well, you were there, because otherwise we were gotten into a fight. I didn't want to get into a fight, man. It's funny because the picture that you posted for the event reminded me of that night where Chino, there was this this guy at the, <laughs> by the beach who got into this like altercation with Chino, and I I really thought that that was going to end up in a big fight, and at the end <laughs> they were like best buddies. <laughs> I mean, if I want to get into a fight, I definitely want to bring Chino. If I don't want to get into any fight, I don't want Chino there, man. <laughs> no. Bravo, come on now. I no. remember the bachelor's party of Jason. He was ready to kill this guy. <laughs> no, it was so funny. This guy was this guy was yelling at Chino and saying shit, and Chino was ready to beat his ass, and then the guy just fell down. <laughs> and I'm so glad he fell down on his own because Chino, like, it was like, and then Chino's like, okay, cool, cool, I don't need to do it. Anymore. Okay, but uh, he's the one that got the best pictures of that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As long yeah. as he was, he he took all of those pictures. Yeah, he took that picture. Oh, by the way, I want to defend Orlando. I just checked the chat. Orlando was never invited. Like, oh, see, never, that's, I told you. I never told got, you. He never got the. He never, I, the no, so. he was not in the chat. Orlando, I'm sorry, but we'll do it next time, bro. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna defend Rodney because once you're that age, you forget things. <laughs> Hey, never mind me saying don't hire Orlando. Sorry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll show up. He'll show up. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. But anyway, it's been an hour. Last question, guys. What have you learned in the pandemic, during the pandemic, about yourself? Jason, go first. Uh, I think for me, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those learning it's a it's a process it's not a like an overnight thing but i think for me it's been i've been kind of overworking myself um so that's kind of one of the things i'm trying to slow things down a little bit i mean you got this new job are they overworking you just you know work and you know music and everything else just i i tend to try to do too many things so i think for me it's like trying to slow things down and just kind of be more selective on that's know, good how i spend my time yeah jose uh yes the fact that uh even even though we're all secluded uh, somehow we still are able to connect with people that we care about like right now uh, while we were able to do that before we didn't get to do this as much but now every time that we're doing these kind of connections, they tend to be more meaningful. Corey? Uh, just the, all the things you you thought you really needed to survive, you really didn't. <laughs> and uh, and just like that there's, you know, you find out who's who's really important and, and make them priorities, you know? So 
just uh, making priorities of the things that are actually important. Chino? Well, something that I've learned is um, don't ever take anything, you know, for granted. For those of you that are in this high course, you know, of like, oh, all I do is uh, DJ and I have nothing else to do. And, you know, I make a lot of money. And for all of those promoters, like, oh, I got this and this and that. You know what? No. You always need to have a plan B. Plan B meaning, bro, you know what? If what you do is, is if all you do is a dancer, you know what? Don't just great focus on that, but also have a plan B. Go to school, get some some sort of like degree or something, you know, at least a, a, a quick uh, two year program or something that way, you know, because when we don't know if this thing is going to happen again. If it happens again, you gotta have something on your back pocket, you know, um, get a job, you know? I know that a lot of people, you know, think so highly of themselves that, oh, this is all I do and uh, and I'm the best at this and that and blah, blah, blah. No, always have a plan B, you know? Um, so that's one of the things, well, that's one of the main things that I that I have learned, you know, that you need to have a plan B. Jimmy? Uh, well, to pick it back off of what Jaira just said, um, so he's talking about like from getting from, you know, start from a high point or low. I think for me, what I really learned is um, I deserve good things. I, I think that prior to the pandemic, I didn't think, I'll be honest with you, I didn't believe inside of me that I deserved uh, a good paying job. I didn't think I deserved uh, a happy life. I didn't think I deserved yeah. a uh, happy relationship. And you know, just leading up to 2020, it was, it changed everything. I, mm. I, I, I feel like for, at least for me, 2020 was the best years of my life or best year of my life where, yeah. like I said, I, I blessing in disguise. Yeah. I mean, I live, I, I'm living in a, one of the most expensive uh, zip codes right now. You know, I am, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm working for the state right now, working. Show sure. off. <laughs> yeah, well, you, I, go, you go well, to cancer wars and, and just I, tell I people that, you don't have cancer. I hate to say it, but you gotta remember. Some in 2020, you know. Yeah, but you gotta remember. Before all of this, I didn't have this shit. You know, yeah. before it's like and you guys know. I mean, Ronnie, you know, I was like yeah. fucking abusive, like abusive uh, parents, man. Yeah. You know, just like relationships, it just didn't work out. I just had breakups yeah. and I, and and jobs. I was like scrounging for money for years and years and yeah. years, and to finally just somehow turn it all around it wasn't just like easy it took work to get to this point but it just finally came to fruition last year and i i and you know for i don't know about you guys but i know a few people out there where when you start telling yourself you don't deserve good things you don't get it until you start telling yourself you can't it's almost the possibility you know positivity and and uh uh your daily ritual of trying to tell yourself you're great because in, 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 in a way it will happen. For me, what I've learned during this pandemic is, as you all know, I, didn't, I, I left the corporate world uh, 2006 when I in part doing bachata and all of that stuff. I have forgotten the value of a nine to five job. I have forgotten the sacrifice and, and the sweat. And you know, where I work in a warehouse, Amazon, 10 hours straight, four days from 1 a.m. until, you know, count it until six, uh, until until 10 hours. And then That's when crazy. you get off, you can barely walk. You can barely walk because you're not used to standing up and lifting shit. I, I was in tears that I have forgotten the nine to five job that I appreciated my wife's working, my brother's working. Uh, all the people that sacrifice their life working for their family. I have forgotten that because of bachata. I have forgotten that because of an easy job, teaching shit during the weekend and you get money. But I have forgotten like echoing uh, Jimmy and echoing Jairo. Besides that, there is that benefit of your health insurance. There is that benefit of something is going to your social security or whatnot in retirement, you know, it, it, it took me back to appreciate the working people because to be honest with you in our industry, whether it's DJing, promoting and all of that, 
we know it's hard work, but compare to a nine to five job where you have to wake up automatically mm -hmm. at fucking 7 a.m. To, to get to your work, that's no comparison. You know? That is what I'm having a hard time with. <laughs> okay, I, I don't want to hear about this. I haven't had a eight hour job in a long time. <laughs> 10 to 12, 13 hours a day. <laughs> But, Sorry, bro. It was the truth, man. <laughs> yeah, but I was just talking to Hyra about that the other day. Of as far as yep. the value of that, you know. So I've learned. I've learned a lot from that. Okay, very, very, very last question. I'm sure you're all aware of what's happening lately. Cancel culture. What do you think about it, Jimmy? It's fucked up. That's what, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like specifically it. in our industry, I've seen some. I can't, I think cancel uh, cancel culture is bullshit. I'll be I'll be straight up with you. Uh, I we've gotten to the point where it's like everyone's just sitting around, sitting in their homes and their PJs or whatever, and they're able to say, "Oh yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you don't do that." Like fuck it, you know. I'll be straight up with you. Fuck it, you know. People, this is fucking America. Do Are whatever you, you want. It's Dr. Seuss books. Uh, I don't know about what happened there, but I'm you know from my perspective is. Dude, just let people do whatever they want. As long as it's within the law or, you know, as long as they don't get caught by the law, just do whatever you want, man. It's, it's, we live in this great country called the United States of America, and we forget that we don't have the same liberties that other countries do. And I think people just, just fucking took it for granted. And that's how I see about cancel culture. And like, just fucking let it go. And I, I'm very colorful about it because... I, I'm, I want to make a point with my F words, you know, that's all. <laughs> you did, mission accomplished. <laughs> Jose? Uh, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I think that we're looking at things completely the wrong way. If we were to start actually educating everybody about the genocide that happened to the Native Americans and all of the other bad things that we have done in order to get to where we are, then you wouldn't really have to worry too much about that. Uh, but we focus on some of these little things in order not to actually teach everybody about the big picture of what we have done to be where we are. Hiro? I, I'm going to repeat exactly what Jose and what the Cohen Smooth said, so go on. <laughs> <laughs> Jason? Uh, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think, you know, there are laws for a reason. And I think, you know, there is, there, we are kind of at a place where the pendulum can overswing. So we do need to find that sort of medium where, you know, we're respectful of everybody. But I think I have, a, my philosophy is if you have something personal that you like to do, that you enjoy to do, but it doesn't hurt anybody else, by all means, knock yourself out. But when that starts to you know impact other people then i think that that's where we need to you know as as a society work together um, but i agree i think that the cancel culture is is kind of a new term in, in there but there's a uh, an overswing that's happening you know just in general but i think i think we can all work together and find something a medium where that works for everybody and not just because just because i like something you know, just because I, I enjoy traditional bachata, I don't want to impose that on other people that want to have and enjoy other things. That's that's just my opinion. Well put. Uh, Corey? Well, I, I don't know how to answer, answer that question. I feel like, you know, people... Hey, that's, get, why I said, that's why I said, you know, I agree and disagree, so go on. <laughs> I mean, I think Jason said it really well, like the uh, the pendulum can swing too far in the other direction, but I don't feel like it has, you know, like, I feel like, like, you know, people that never got like the, the areas, the pendulum never swung before. It's finally swinging over there. And, it, and for the people who always had the pendulum, like it feels restrictive, but, uh, but I don't know. I think, you know, if it swings back and forth, eventually it's going to even out and everyone's going to be able to do their thing without without having to trample on anyone else and it won't be canceling it'll just be like you gotta like not step on people if you want to run over here just step around them you know it shouldn't be you should still be able to get where you go without hurting people you should still be able to do whatever you want to do without hurting people uh so like if you get if you can't do that then maybe you should be canceled is, is how i feel about it. but i don't know 
I mean, maybe, maybe cancel is not the right word, but maybe I think you should be allowed to complain if someone's actually shitting on your culture or, or your individuality. I don't know. I think but, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of all of this as far as uh, <laughs> what it is with a cancel culture, because at one point there is the we have the freedom in our country. We have the freedom of speech. We have the freedom of religion. We have the freedom, freedom of choice, really. Uh, but then sometimes we hung into that too much, like let's say abortion right there, it's a choice of the woman, yet some people are against it. Uh, being a Republican or being a Democrat, if you're a Republican, you're a Trump supporter, they're gonna boycott you or whatever, vice versa, because you like Joe Biden and whatnot. And so therefore, I shouldn't be friends with you, I shouldn't add you on Facebook, this type of thing. I think that there should, there should be a balance. There's got to be a balance in, in this cancel culture thing. Uh, yeah, it is one thing to expose someone who have sexually assaulted someone or have raped someone and, uh, 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 that nobody knows to expose them that way. That's a crime, okay? But you got to find the balance there somewhere when it comes to the freedom that you want to choose. Like for me, if I want to be a born-again Christian, don't take it against me because you don't believe in God. I respect you as an atheist, just 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 as as much as I respect people that are Roman Catholic, whatever. Because we're all different, like Jason said, and and like uh, 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 what Jimmy said. <clears throat> you know, uh, given to that, given to that trend of thought, we take coffee differently. Uh, on that note, <laughs> everyone is quiet. <laughs> 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 It's a heavy. It's a heavy issue right now. That you know, I, I, I we made that video about sexual assault in the industry. It has a lot. It had a lot of views, but um, but anyway, this is gonna be posted in YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not subscribed to this podcast, it's YouTube.com. Rajata Aquino. Just click subscribe there. Uh, I'll be bringing back these people at one time or another in any subject, maybe DJing in our industry, but Jimmy. Javier Bardem, uh, uh, Corey Rayner, DJ Chino, DJ Guapo. I want to thank you personally. I know I don't get to hang out with you as much anymore. I want to thank you personally for inspiring me in my life. At one point or another, you have helped me out when it comes to the industry, uh, when it comes to personal friendship. You guys have helped me a lot, and you know that. And I want to thank you for doing that, and uh, I hope we can hang out again later. It will happen. Yeah, we'll we'll okay, invite right. Orlando too next time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Orlando next time. Sorry, Orlando. I love you guys. See you. See you soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bye, guys. Bro. All right, guys. Peace Great out. See you guys. <laughs>